Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd habita fillah In a Hassan hadith Miqdam ibn And Miqdam, who said, soon uh, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, soon there will come a time that a man will be reclining on his pillow. And when one of my ahadith is narrated, he will say, the book of Allah is sufficient between us and you. Whatever it states is permissible. We will take as permissible. And whatever it states is forbidden, we will take as forbidden. Verily, Whatever the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has forbidden is like that which Allah has forbidden. And in another narration, an Ubaidullah ibn Abu Rafi from his father that said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I do not want to find any one of you reclining on his pillow. And when bad news comes to him of something that I have commanded or forbidden, he says, I do not know whatever we find in the book of Allah, we will follow. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha narrated, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever innovates something in this matter of ours that is not a part of it, will have it rejected. All of these ahadith, ahabat fillah, are in Sunan ibn Majah, the book of, uh, book of the Sunnah. Or following the sunnah. And the general meaning is that we adhere to that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam agreed with and accepted. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And following his example in every way. And that by following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we are following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are following righteousness and everything that is good. So for us as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's upon us to not get weak because we live in a time full of trials and tribulations and full of many, many, many distractions and many things to take us away from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and many things which appear in a deceptive way to be another way other than the Sabila law, other than the Sabila Mu'minid. And it will not always be in totality, meaning that it will not always be that you that the people want to compromise the whole book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but rather it will just be something small. It will be a part of it. And this is how the shaitan leads us astray. This is how the shaitan leads us to a new path. This is how the shaitan leads us to a new dawah. A new minhaj, a new methodology for understanding and practicing the religion. The danger in this ahabat tefillah, for example, there are some people who call to the book in the sunnah. In general, they do. And it appears that they're from ahl tawheed and that they're from ahl sunnah and that they love ahl hadith or that they're from Ahl Hadith. But in fact, their whole methodology in Dawah contradicts the Sabil al-Mu'mineen and contradicts what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was upon and what the Salaf al-Salih, Ridwan Allahi Alayhim, what they were upon. And when they that compromise, of course, that, that leads to a compromise in the methodology and a compromise in the way and 
a compromise in which the people begin to practice bid'ah and innovation because they have left the Sabil al-Mu'mineen or they have left part of the Sabil al-Mu'mineen in place of a new Sabil. Sabil al-Kafirin perhaps. Sabil al-Munafikin perhaps. Sabil al-Ahl al-Bid'ah. And this is the danger for us all. And this is why it is so scary even calling to the sunnah especially when we know our own sins i don't really like to talk about the religion and have the same zeal that i did before because i know all the sins that i have and i know how the shaitan comes to me and how the shaitan threatens us to compromise the sunnah of the message of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam it's scary sometimes you'd rather i'd rather stay out here in these woods on this mountain and hide and not be involved in da'wah at all and not do 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 anything but just try to practice my religion perhaps one day maybe this will be the case but however we don't want to be deceived by the shaitan he will come to you in many ways to get you to go away and compromise and find new methodologies and new innovations in the religion New innovations in the religion mean bid'a in the bid'a diniya, not bid'a logowiya, not bid'a in innovation in the lingu the ling as a linguistic terms. We're not talking about the fact we're using a camera or that I have this uh, tablet or these kind of technologies that we're using as a sabil for dawah that are helping us and strengthening the asal of the dawah. But we're talking about new ways of calling. New ways of compromising. Perhaps interfaith, not interfaith dialogue, but if it is meant that interfaith where you're sitting and you're allowing the preacher to give you some dawah and then he gives you five minutes to do some dawah. No. That's impossible to do that. That doesn't mean you can't have friendly relations or whatever is for the islah and maslaha for the community. But interfaith... Dawa? How can you call to shirk and you call to tawheed at the same time? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika and usrika bika wa ana a'lamu staghfiruka li bil a'lamu And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam